Another shot. Oh! oh Big oh, oh, flying oh, knee! And Trevor Jacobs Get fighting the, for the single yeah, leg. Trevor Jacobs ate that flying knee like it was nothing. Yes, he did. <laughs> What's up? I'm Trevor Jacob. <laughs> Today I'm going to talk about... <laughs> What's up? I'm Trevor Jacob. Today I'm going to talk about how I went and fought two pro MMA fighters in two weeks and had no idea what I'm getting myself into, but I found out. We're going to talk a little bit about MMA and my journey with it and how it all began and uh, why I've been drawn to it. And the short answer to that is I don't really know, but um, the longer version of it is I've been drawn to it since I was a little kid and I'm not really sure why. Um, I guess I'll start by saying that I grew up in a little town called Mammoth Lakes, California, and I would go to jujitsu and the MMA class there at the local gym pretty much every single day after school. And, uh, then we'd go after snowboarding. So, um, I basically grew up going to the gym as a kid with my dad and, uh, he'd give me the option. He's like, you either go to this class or you work out and lift weights or you do your homework. So I always chose lifting weights or going to the class instead of the homework. So that's kind of how I got drawn to it. And then so I was like 13, 14. Um, and I would go in there and just get the crap beat out of me and I would leave bleeding every single time. And then finally one day, uh, Davey, who was my coach there, um, he left or I left without bleeding. He would just like beat the crap out of me every time. So I started to learn how to defend myself a little bit, but then uh, hoist Gracie came up and did a seminar there at the gym. And I ended up teaching both his kids how to snowboard one day. So then he let me into the seminar for free and then we, you know, became friends, whatever, but I kind of just became interested by it. And then later on, um, I got introduced as like when I was like 16 years old, I got introduced to boss Rutan and I was like, who are these tough guys? Like, like, why are they so, you know, intriguing to me in my mind? And it's just like, these guys are just badass guys. I don't know. I guess as I got older, I was interested in just like watching the fights, like my cousin and I and my brother and different people would just like watch fights. And then finally I'm like, you know, I wonder what it would be like to actually go in and be in that octagon and and fight like what is that like when this guy is walking down the path you know he's going into the octagon what does that feel like what is that person going through what are the thoughts in his head like what is that like and that's just like was a question in my mind look everything i've ever done in my life is all about a vehicle in action sports you know it's like there's always a snowboard involved there's always a bike involved there's always something a parachute involved but with mma and the octagon thing there's like there's no one or there's nothing there but you and this other person's body and mind and that's all that's on the line it's like there's n you're locked in there and there's there's no vehicle it's just your body and mind's the vehicle you know everything i've ever done is just like out of curiosity like what what is that like what's that journey like and that was the question so i began to pursue that question um with the intentions of like yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna go out and do some pro mma fights and i want to see what that's like and it's not about trying to get recognition for it. It's not about trying to be the best fighter in the world. It's just like that personal experience. Okay, what is it like to be a fighter? What is that what is that like from start to finish? Cutting the weight, training, you know, all of it. Like what what is that experience like? And I wanted to go live it. You know, like I said, like I, I trained a little bit as a kid, but I hadn't trained in like 10 years. Then I met um, Nick Castillo, who runs a gym, Transition Jiu-Jitsu in Santa Barbara. And then we, you know, started riding bikes and dirt biking. You know, he's all into that stuff too. I started coming to his Jiu-Jitsu classes. And around that same time, you know, I was watching a bunch of MMA fights and stuff. And I direct messaged uh, Dean Thomas, who's a, you know, UFC vet um, on the internet. And I was like, hey man, like what's it going to take for me to get a fight? And I actually sent a message. I sent this similar message to like a hundred different people that I have like highly respected in the sport of MMA. And he was one of them out of all those hundred people I sent messages to. He's the only one to respond. And he's like, I feel like we could make something happen, you know? So I went and got all the tests done and uh, did all these little, um, you know, you got to get like neuro scans and eyesight scans and physicals and all this different stuff. It's quite a process. Then you got to submit all the stuff and get approved. It's like a long process, like months of time. But um, I went through with it, and then he's, and this is the stuff that I'm curious about. You know, you don't, when you watch a UFC fighter, you watch an MMA fight, 
you see like five five minutes or whatever, or fifteen minutes or twenty five minutes of the glory of these guys going at it, but you don't see behind the scenes like what is it like? I went through the process of having to like you know yeah fill out all the stuff and like wait for it to be completed and all the, all that's like that's the process and then that's not even it's just a mission to do um, and you don't think about that stuff when you're a viewer watching that. I wanted to just like I said experience that. So <laughs> uh, Dean Thomas, thank you so much. I bugged you every single day. I sent. A text message to you literally every single day and I'm pretty sure you think I'm insane but uh, finally uh, you found me a fight thank you to b2 fighting series because every single other organization understandably so wouldn't give me an opportunity because who is this knucklehead coming in here with zero MMA experience or zero competitive MMA experience and just wanting a fight um, so anyway I appreciate it and then he got me the fight so and then B2 is like, hey, we have a fight coming up next week. <laughs> Can you be there? And it was in Mississippi. And uh, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So I just said, yes, definitely a sporadic thing. But I'm like, no, this is this is the opportunity that I've been literally texting Dean for every single day for like multiple years. He finally found me a fight. Like, I don't care who it is, what it is, where it is. Let's go. Um, so we fly out there and... Uh, I thought I was going to die. So I never, I had six days to lose 25 pounds and I didn't know that was physically possible, but it is. And, uh, I guess people actually cut more weight than that. But for me, never having cut weight in my life, I actually thought I was going to die. Like my, you start to hallucinate, you start going through a process that like is quite brutal, especially when you're traveling. Cause like, not that I hate Mississippi, but I didn't want to be there very long. So we flew there the day before so like traveling while cutting weight while cutting 25 pounds is absolutely miserable i get there i'm like so skinny i'm i literally think i'm gonna die i didn't have a credit card so we missed the rental car thing so we had to uber from like we had to uber a couple hours um and then we get there and uh we're going straight to the weigh-in so we have to like weigh you know weigh yourselves and then you do the standoff or whatever nick's like helping me up to the thing i never even like I said, experience anything like this. And I was like a pound and a half over. So I walk up to the, uh, what is it called? The standoffs or the face offs or whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you can see me laughing and I'll pull this up. But, uh, you see me laughing and the other dude is like a beast of a dude. He's all ready to go. And I literally feel like I am a wounded deer. <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. That was my first experience. And I'm like, holy shit, it's happening. Here we are. Okay. The next day, the fight happens, and uh, we're gonna watch this first fight right here. Warren says he's turning my hands into a brick right now. Fuck yeah. But uh, I was telling him it's my first time having my hands wrapped. Warren says he's got how many? 110? 110 pro fights. Holy shit. B2 Fighting Series fans, this professional lightweight fight is set for three five-minute rounds. First, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, in the B2 Fighting Series cage, making his professional debut. His height, 5 feet, 11 inches. His weight, 158 pounds. He trains with transition and comes to you from Santa Barbara, California. His name is Trevor Jacob. So they call my name. I walk out. And uh, as soon as uh, the guy st <laughs> So as soon as at this point, I'm like, I think I'm pretty screwed. Like my, I don't know, my, uh, my energy like wasn't there, man. I'd never drop 25 pounds in 12 hours and then come back, try to gain it all back. Like I said, I felt like a wounded deer. So I'm like, you can see me praying right there. I'm like, <laughs> God help me. I'm staring across the cage at just this dude that is like a savage. He's like not, I don't know, man. I'm just like, yep, here it goes. And uh, yeah, Brandon Gator there, just a savage and also a super nice dude. We got to talk a little bit afterwards, but I'm just staring like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? But I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> okay, so we walk up to the center, and uh, I'm staring at this dude, and he wants blood. There's no, there's no question about it. And I've never been in a cage before. I've never been in a situation like this. 
and um, I'm just like, try, I don't know, like, okay, we're about, to, we're about to go at it. But then the bell rings, right? Or not the bell, or I don't know. The ref says fight. And as soon as that happened, I felt like a deer in the headlights. So you see me not moving at all and he's coming at it. I'm just like, okay, I'm in a fight. But that, that never registered in my mind. So I'm going straight for the takedown. And he got me once right there, boom, and he hit me in the face. And I was like, oh, that's when I kind of woke up like, I'm in a fight. <laughs> but so I'm kind of coming from far away, trying to like figure it out. I go for another takedown again, boom, jumps on me. And then I'm like, no, I didn't fly all the way across the country to get tapped out that quick. So I'm like pushing his arm, pushing his arm. And then finally I try to escape out of it a little bit. I turned my head a little bit and his forearm went right underneath the chin. And then I'm like, no, I'm not choking out. I'm not choking out. I flip over at some point here and I'm like, no, I will not give this up. Boom. All right. Then he sinks it in and I was like, okay, I can no longer breathe. I remember taking like one last deep breath. I'm like, Ugh. And then you see me freaking out right there is because I had like half a second. I started to see stars. I was going out and then boom. Um, if I didn't tap out right then and there, I would have been passed out like half a second later. So that was that one. And that was uh, definitely an interesting experience. Um, when Brandon gets his arm raised, I'm laughing because I was like the most pathetic experience like for me because I trained so hard and like, um, you know, I'm I take, uh, I'm, I'm a competitive person, so, but I've never been in a situation like this. So, you know, I'm laughing cause I was like, that was just not what I was expecting. I was definitely at least trying to at least last the whole time and not get tapped out in like the first minute of the fight. So I was pretty bummed out. Um, I was like, that was ridiculous, but not to take away from Brandon, you know, he's a badass fighter that that's what he does. And, uh, frankly, that's not what I spend all my time doing. So I wanted redemption. <laughs> so not even like a week goes by or like that night I was like, Hey, I want to fight again. Like, can I fight tonight? Can I <laughs> go again? Cause I didn't get what I wanted out of it. So anyway, the B2 guys, they're like, yeah, we got another fight coming up in like two weeks. You want it? I'm like, hell yeah. So then I didn't really think about when I booked that fight. I'm like, I have to cut all that weight again. Like in 14 days that I just did, I gained it all back. All right, I'm going to do this again. Um, so I committed to it again and, uh, I just wanted to be able to get at least experience like an MMA fight. That first one was, it, it just wasn't, I don't know. I wanted to go in there and like go at it hard. Um, and that just wasn't what it is, frankly, because of my mistake early on and he jumped right on it. So we go to Alabama. Next thing you know, I'm in the cage again, but this time I'm like, all right, I'm going to be smarter. I'm not going to like dive, but you know, with the whole cutting weight thing, I'm like, cool, I'll cut all this weight and uh, I'll be way bigger than the other dude. You know, like, I don't know this kind of stuff, but I'm like, of course the dude's thinking the same thing. And so <laughs> I stare across the cage this time. And then this guy, David, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're a monster. <laughs> like, Referee starts the fight again. And I was like, all right, my only goal here is to like, n you know, not be scared, but also just be patient. Like, don't just die for a takedown like stay calm, you know, at least just be smart about what you're going to do. And I don't, I, this is the first time I've watched this. So I'm at least like, he's, he's coming in, measuring me up. Um, oh, boom, got me in the face. Boom. Got me in the head, kicked me in the head. And then somewhere in here, he gets me pretty good, but I don't know which one it was, but you know, he's putting the pressure on, like he's obviously not afraid. And I'm, I go for the takedown there. He gets me off. Boom, got me with a flying knee. And that one got me, but I didn't really uh, like resonate with it, I guess. But here I got one leg and I was trying to get further up to at least get him down and I couldn't do it, man. I was trying as hard as I could. There, I almost got him, but he, I couldn't get it. And then, uh, yeah, like I said, I don't really remember this. So we'll see what, what happens. He's just trying, I'm trying to get his leg trying to take him down. I'm trying as hard as I can right here. So, uh, but then again, I forgot this part that he had gotten me a couple times in the face and I couldn't see out of my eyes. <laughs> so, um, oh, that's why my temple still hurts. He got me the elbow to the head. Boom. Another flying knee. Now I'm hurt. Now I'm like, that sucked. And so he jumps on me. And uh, at this point, man, I was trying as hard as I can, but you got to think like these guys are badasses. These guys are this is all they do all day long. For me, 
I train as hard as I can. You know, I'm an athlete and I've spent my whole life being an athlete, but this is my first time being in this environment. So for, for that being said, like I'm proud of myself for it. No, I didn't put on the performance with both these fights that I would have liked to, but I mean, keep in mind, I've never had any amateur fights. These are first two pro fights back to back within two weeks of each other. Cause I just want to get in there and experience it. Like, I don't care. I'm not trying to like have some, you know, MMA record that's unbeatable, you know, like, no, look at, I'm just covering up, just getting the shit beat out of me right there. <laughs> but, uh, but that's what, that's what the experience is for. It's like, what, what is it like to go in there and be a fighter? And I'll tell you, it's gnarly. And these dudes are savages and, um, the process there I go, I get tapped out, boom, done. Um, Hey, I, dude, I got in there. I'm proud of myself for that. But like, it's the experience, man. Like you can see, I'm not, I'm not mad at the dude for punching my face in. It's just like, I knew I was signing up for this and this is what it is. And it, it kind of sucked, but it was a great time. Like I got to meet so many cool people, like all the B2 people that put on these fights, like they're such nice people. And, uh, you know, the fighters are super respectful that I got to fight. Like it wasn't about me trying to put on some egotistical, like, you know, I'm some fighter. It's like, what, what's it like to get in there? And, and it's not easy. The weight cuts are not easy. You know, the, everything about this, everything about being a pro fighter is really, really intense and really, really hard. And I have nothing but the utmost respect for everyone out there, at least trying to pursue fighting or the guys that are out there doing it and being pro fighters, you know, from the smallest guys that aren't even known to the biggest well-known guys, like it's gnarly. It's a, it's a process, right? So, um, anyway, that's what I'm, you know, like I'm just trying to experience life and experience what it's like and all these different avenues that I'm curious about. So if there was other opportunities to fight, I would absolutely love to do it again. Um, and, uh, if there's anybody out there trying to make a fight happen, let's go. I want redemption on this. So I got two losses back to back, but, uh, I would love to do more of it. If the opportunities out there, hit me up. So, um, the other last two is, uh, what, okay. So I have some other questions I was going to throw into here and it's, what do you think of long-term physical and psychological damage fighters will experience? So for me, I've spent a large portion of my life studying psychology. Um, and also just like how the mind works, how emotions work, how different things work as well as being, um, you know, I've spent the majority of my life as well. Um, being an athlete and understanding injuries, being through a lot of injuries, going through a lot of injuries, um, and then experiencing different sports and what they do and how they affect your body and mind. And I would say, you know, probably the most um, intense sports I can think of is is like or the most damaging sports physically are probably skateboarding, motocross, and BMX or mountain biking. Like those are just the concrete is not forgiving at all. And those really hurt MMA on the other hand. I mean, it's a gamble. You go in there and this dude's going to probably really either hurt you or you might get lucky, but you're going in there knowing like, this is going to suck. Like I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get punched. I'm going to get kicked. And long term, I would say there's nothing good physically that's going to happen from it. It's not like you're going to be some yoga master from going out and fighting. Like it's going to put some damage on your body and it's, you're going to feel that as far as psychologically, I would say there's a huge, um, risk factor in certain things. One, I would say the physical or the psychological, um, risk there is a lot of expectation. Like if people have an expectation, so with the two professional fights that I went and did, um, there was other fighters, of course, you're all there backstage watching each other. There was a lot of people there that I watched lot uh, lose, but that was like their make or break kind of ordeal. Like, um, if they didn't do this, they probably weren't going to get another chance kind of a thing. And they had put a lot of work, you know, this was their life. This was, if they don't make this fight, if they don't win this fight, they're going to get a concierge job at the hotel. You know, they're going to work at Taco Bell, like for real. And I watched some of those guys lose and they're balling out, you know, bawling their eyes out backstage. Like this just changed my life forever. And that was very real for me to see because it's like, you know, for me, I've spent my life, you know, in other aspects and other passions and other things where that's not all my eggs aren't in that basket. But I was witnessing people firsthand that their all their eggs are in those baskets or are in that basket. And it was very a humbling experience. 
Um, but I would say, you know, if you're going to go all in on something, then as far as you go in, you know, you're going to have to come out. And what I mean by that is like, if your intentions, if everything, you put everything into fighting and it doesn't go your way, well, you're going to be disappointed. Like, you know, they say depression, a lot of depression or stress can be from, you know, life's not going the way that you expected it to. And if you don't win a fight and you have all this pressure on there, that that's going to be a psychological thing that's going to affect you. But as far as um, CTE and brain injuries and um, psychological, psychological damage that way and emotional, absolutely. Like long term, we've seen a lot of different action sports athletes kill themselves. And, you know, from BMX to football players to MMA athletes, like there's a huge risk there. And uh, I don't know, I guess uh, you just got to be smart. And if you're willing to go down that down that path, then you got to know what are the possibilities of the things and the outcomes that can come with it. So I'd be, if you're, I would say if you're an up and coming MMA athlete, boxer, you know, and you're trying to watch out for your future, really be smart about your decisions and what you're thinking about doing. Um, you know, try to, if, if, if I were you, if, you know, uh, just train smart, you know, I know a lot of injuries happen when people are training like that, but I would just say that uh, you gotta you gotta be smart, but you also gotta know the in, the um, the passion that you're getting involved with because that comes with it. I just wanted to remind you once more that if you go to adventure.com, you can get a sweet shirt like this. There's also hats, sweatshirts, and uh, you can also book me for a life coaching session, or you can come skydiving with me. So adventure.com, check it out. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you next time.